Uh, so this is a thing. Did you know Amazon made a smartphone? I sure didn't until someone on my Discord brought it up. Link in the description to the server, by the way. And as soon as I found out, I just had to have it. Hey, how's it going? I'm Josh from 91 Tech, and today we're taking a look at the Amazon Fire Phone, a smartphone no one seems to remember existed. Let's discuss why. What you got on deck? Skyfall, Lean In, then some Pinterest. You? Twitter, Minecraft, and then some Hunger Games. Boom. Oh, you guys are all set, huh? Oh, yeah. New Amazon Fire Phone. It comes with Amazon Prime. Tons of cool stuff for no extra charge. Really? It comes with Amazon Prime? Yeah. There's so much to watch. I've been on this earth nine years. I've never seen anything like it. The new Amazon Fire Phone, with a full year of Prime included, exclusively on AT&T. So in this video, I'm not going to be reviewing this phone per se. I think I'll probably save that for a video down the line. But instead, I just want to take a look at it for what it is and why Amazon even made it in the first place. It's a 2014 smartphone, so clearly it's not going to hold up great anymore. But why did Amazon discontinue it so quickly? There were no others after all. What went wrong? Did anything go right with this phone? Well, the easy answer to what went wrong is Amazon using their own operating system in Fire OS, which is basically what they're still putting out with their line of tablets and Kindles, but it was a bit more than that. The hardware was mediocre, it was full of gimmicks, and was overpriced for what it was. The Fire Phone is about as bland as a phone gets, and the sales reflected that. The Guardian reported that no more than 35,000 Fire Phones were sold in the first 20 days. This really hurts uh, when you take into account that apparently Amazon took an $170 million loss from lack of sales of this thing. So what is this phone even? I mean, it looks pretty normal. We have an all-black design with a 4.7-inch 720p display. We have a small rectangular home button below the display, soft plastic sides, and a glass back, believe it or not. It wasn't unusual to see glass phones in 2014. The iPhone 4 and 4S brought it in 2010 and 2011, and so many Android competitors followed suit, even before wireless charging. We have the smiling Amazon logo there, and uh, look, I have nothing in particular against the Amazon logo, but it doesn't have the most positive connotation. When I see it, I think of Amazon based basics, which makes a lot of cheap tech products that aren't too bad, some are actually quite good, but they're cheap, and that's the point. So when I see this, I think cheap. I think a much better branding move would have been to put the fire word mark on the back here. It would be more simple and would separate itself from Amazon a little bit, which I think would have been the move to make. This is the box. It's actually pretty neat. It's black with a cool design on it and the words dynamic perspective under fire. I'll get to what that is and why. If you haven't noticed, there are literally five cameras on the front of this phone. Kind of ironic, that uh, an Amazon phone, of all things, would have so many cameras, given that Amazon doesn't have the best rep when it comes to privacy. But again, it has to do with dynamic perspective, so I'll come back to it. I picked this phone up just a bit ago off eBay for about $85 Canadian plus shipping and customs fees. It was actually shipped to me from the UK, and you can tell when we get into the box and see the power adapter. This phone has basic micro USB, nothing weird or proprietary, so that's no issue. The seller included a pretty basic case here, so that's cool. And inside the box, we also have a pair of earbuds, that definitely aren't a design stolen from Apple EarPods. And of course, a micro USB cable. Pretty standard for a smartphone, and hey, the box is cool, so I'll take it. 85 bucks might seem a bit expensive, but that's the price it generally goes for. Around at least 60 to 100 USD is what you'll see on eBay. This phone is no good anymore at all, but because there aren't very many, me can get a decent buck for it. This is a darn strange phone. There's a dedicated camera button on the side, and turning it on using the top power button, we have a pretty wild lock screen, and you can immediately immediately see what the dynamic perspective is. It's not going to be as easy to see on camera, but the front facing cameras are there to track your head and face and adjust the UI to give you a 3D perspective. And it works, like really works. It's quite unique. Now does the phone actually look 3D? Not really, but it's different and a lot crazier than just the perspective shifting say an iPhone would do when you tilt it. Even when you unlock the phone, the home screen still shifts with the dynamic perspective. And again, it's pretty good. Even on like a table, it still seems to track 
my face. It's neat, but completely and utterly useless, and critics were right to call it a game account launch. The OS itself is so bland looking, it hurts. Just a dark grey background with the most generic looking app icons possible. This is Fire OS, not quite Android, but Amazon's own thing. It's used on their own tablet still, and is a fork from Android, so it's derived from it. But it still does limit us from having access to the Google Play Store by default. You'll need to get everything from Amazon. You can use a backdoor method to get the Google Play Store pretty easily, but clearly the average user was never going to do this. Amazon does have some apps, but it's always been missing a lot of big ones, such as Instagram, Snapchat, you name it. Of course, you can still sideload them, but that's a pain, and not something the majority of users would ever figure out. Again, this isn't my full review, so I'm not going to go too in-depth into the phone and its hardware, but uh, more about why and how this thing even happened in the first place, because it's weird. This phone was a huge, ginormous flop for so many reasons. The limited ecosystem is mentioned, the mediocre hardware, and uh, probably more than anything else, the starting price. The reason Amazon tablets have done fairly well is because they're cheap. Ultimately, your device could be as crappy as possible, but if it's functional and cheap, people will still buy it. But instead of following this trend, Jeff Bezos and Amazon decided to make a full-featured flagship that had a price of $650. If you signed on with a contract, the price was dropped to $200. Within two months, AT&T dropped that price to 99 cents with a contract. Yeah. People pretty much immediately soured on the Amazon phone. It brought nothing new to the table except Firefly, which I'll get to, and the 3D effect, which was more of a party trick than anything else. It was a pointless device that at best could be compared to the mid-tier Android phones at the time, but those have the benefit of actually running Android. What could Amazon have done differently? Well, make an actually cheap phone. Take out the 3D crap and push it down to like $400 as opposed to $650. All of a sudden, you would have a much larger market base. People who made the mistake of being early adopters regretted it quickly. Amazon touted it as being a phone for their prime customers, but if you wanted it on contract, you had to sign up with AT&T, at least in the US. Speaking of prime, let's go back to Firefly, their second biggest headlining feature. Firefly was a simple function that used the camera to scan and identify thousands of items and barcodes to find them on Amazon. We have this now more regularly with AI advancing, but at the time this was pretty new. Kind of an interesting concept, but when you think about it, all it's really trying to do is get you to buy these scanned items on Amazon. It really wasn't more than extra advertising crammed in and a pathetic attempt for more purchases. Bezos looking in hindsight has defended the Amazon Fire Phone as a bold bet. I mean, he's not wrong about that, and he actually initially said it would take many years and models to get things right. Well, we're six years down the road, and uh, this is the only Fire Phone we've seen. And one of the things, one of the hard things that customers have come to expect from Amazon is that we invent. The project began around the time of the iPhone 4 launch in 2010. Bezos' plan from the start was to wow consumers. Why would they buy an Amazon phone if they could get an iPhone? Bezos wanted to make something big and bold to pull over customers. The idea of making a phone fully for the consumer is a good one, and something I wish phone makers did now. But unfortunately, in this case, the consumer started to look more and more like Jeff Bezos, at least as time went on. He came up with a ton of crazy features, and funnily enough, a lot of them we have in some form now. Nowadays. NFC for contactless payments, well, that's been a thing since the iPhone 6. Hands-free interactions so users could interact with the phone using air gestures. Hey, that sounds like the Pixel 4, and it's just as pointless on there as it would have been on the Fire Phone. And then a force-sensitive grip that could respond in different ways depending on the amount of pressure. Yeah, that sounds like the squeeze gestures on Pixel that opens Google Assistant. Clearly, all of these things were scrapped eventually, but it gives you an impression of what Bezos was wanting to do. Every single little decision with the phone went through Bezos. He apparently was the reason they went with a 13 megapixel camera instead of the more typical for the era 8 megapixels. By the way, a lot of this info I got from an article by Fast Company. It was posted back in 2015. It's a really good read. Uh, I would totally recommend it. So if you want to hear more about this phone, I'll have the link in the description. Most developers weren't particularly happy with Bezos' firm grasp on things, but they kept on because supposedly it paid well. But time moved forward and the prototypes were hardly functional. So in 2013, the company decided to trash most of the project and start over. What remained from the initial aspirations? The 3D functionality, which Bezos forced to stick around. A lot of the devs thought it was a pointless feature, given that there wasn't any benefit to the consumer whatsoever, but Bezos was relentless. And then there was the pricing. They wanted to position the brand somewhere close to Apple in terms of competition and levels of premiumness. And so they made the Fire Phone one of the more expensive phones on the market, which was about a mistake and a half because it didn't sell. Apparently they had a back 
backup idea for a cheaper phone that was exclusive to Prime members, either given for free or for cheap, this actually I think would have been a good idea and would have done well, but the Fire Phone was such a failure, I don't doubt Amazon just wanted to distance themselves from it and everything to do with it. Ultimately, the Fire Phone was a complete disaster and likely would be the largest mistake of any smartphone venture ever if it weren't for, uh, you know, the whole Windows Phone debacle. This phone is interesting, but the design and software is bland and the gimmicks it brings are utterly pointless. So why is this phone more or less forgotten? Simply because it failed to make any splash whatsoever. Heck, I hadn't even heard of it since recently and I was pretty into tech as a kid. I don't know how this slipped past my radar. And with that, I'm uh, pretty much done here. This was the story of one of the strangest devices I've ever had the pleasure of looking at. And I would say in general, one of the strangest tech devices to hit the market. And I actually really enjoyed researching it. Uh, this was kind of a fascinating development cycle. You don't see things like this very often, an attempt to usurp Apple and Android and come up with something completely different. And the reason you don't see it very often is because it always fails. I would say Windows Phone probably got the closest to actually getting somewhere, but in the end, uh, well, they didn't. Did any of you have this phone back in the day? Did any of you hear about it, think about getting it? Let me know in the comments down below. It's a weird one. I'm kind of curious to hear if anybody has any experience with it. If you found this video interesting, maybe hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content just like this. You can follow me over on Twitter and Instagram at 91 underscore tech if you'd like to for some reason. And yeah, Discord server, link in the description. Come by and say hi. Thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Hit uh, 200,000 subscribers recently and that's quite the milestone. So uh, thanks to everyone who's been around and uh, supported my content. I really appreciate it. This is my dream job and I'm living it. I plan to push this as far as I can. But yeah, I'm Josh from 91 Tech and I will see you all next time. Thank you